Hi, this is Chris Glimpse, and you're watching LoopTV.net. So now I'm going to show you how I would use one of the field recordings I've recorded um, around. Uh, and now that it's been processed through the equipment, um, this is how I'd probably go about using one in, in a track. First thing I'd do is drop a field recording into Ableton. Uh, in a lot of cases, it will actually warp it automatically. You can turn this setting off if you want to. If you leave that on, it will actually locate within the waveform certain points, uh, spikes, and it will sort of time warp them in, in time with the rhythm. That can, can work and be a really short, quick way of getting your um, chosen sound recording in, in, in position. Or you can actually just listen through and wait for a, something that you like. In this case, this is the dry recording. So you can hear a few people talking um, and this sound here. Personally, I'm really into, so um, I'm gonna try and incorporate that into my track. So um, first thing to do is to cut it into some sort of a loop. That depends entirely what sort of music you, you make, I suppose. Um, in this case, it's, it's, it's a kind of a dark techno record. Um, so first thing I'd do is I'd cut it into a loop. So it's working in, in this way. Next thing to do would be to try and basically manipulate the audio in the best way that you possibly can. So the, the th three or four obvious ways would be with reverbs, compressors, delays, and filters, and an EQ. So um, in this case, you can listen to the sound, and you can hear there's a lot of quite low sub in there that we're not gonna need, so I'd just take an auto filter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Ableton effects now because this, or, this can be Logic or Cubase, any auto filter in any, in any program is just as good, so. I'll find, I'll take the bits out that I don't want, and as you can hear, this has taken out a lot of the bass. Um, you can do that with an 8-band EQ, like this, where I would choose, let's say, number two, push, push that right up to the top, pan across the spectrum, and as you can hear, as I pan across, you can hear different parts of the audio jumping out. So if I'm pushing it right up to the top, you can hear that texture I'm getting there is a really nice kind of high-end texture. But in this case, we want to really zone in on this sound because that's the sound we're actually gonna use in the mix. So I'll pan back, pan back across until that sound really jumps out, which is about five, about 700 hertz. Um, and then in this case, I might wanna take the bass out a bit more. So then we just roll off the bass like this with another filter. Um, and then if you want to take the high end out, you can do that either with an eight band EQ or you can do it again with a filter. So in this case, I'll show you both techniques. With the eight band EQ, you go onto number four, roll it off. So you're actually just really pinpointing the specific band within, within the audio you're working with. You're actually, I mean, you can be practically surgical with these things if, if you practice enough. So you're really picking out the textures that you want. Or you could do it with a uh, high pass filter. Like so. So the next thing to do is to sidechain the sound to the kick or you can sidechain it to a clap. This will give the track a, a, a breathing, pumping kind of effect. So you can hear Basically, if we just put it on this piece of audio here, which is another field recording. Now that is the same, that, is, that sound there is actually made out of this sound here, but with the EQ pulled right up to the top, so I've actually like really pushed the sound right up into the top corner. Um, and what, I've, what I'm gonna do here, you can see I've done it with a filter, is I'm gonna side chain that to the kick. So when you hear this sound without any side chain, that's all it's doing. Now, once I side chain that to the kick drum, you get the breathing effect like so. So that is something I'll do to three channels here. 
in, in this case I've got three channels with field recordings on. One here, one here, and one here. So there's actually a lot of sonic information in that top one. Not only have you got that sort of ripping sound, you've also got sounds of people talking, um, lots, of little, lots of little textures. Now all of this will add to your track. And one, if you're very careful with the side chaining, releasing and frequency, you can actually get rhythms out of the textures. Right, so now uh, the next thing is I'm gonna show you how I incorporate these field recordings in, in, actually into the mix. Um, so now that I've got three different channels of uh, field recordings being used here, this one with that rip noise, which I'm actually going to use as a piece of percussion, the hiss here, and this hiss, which is a slightly different frequency. Um, once you've got those three things, you can pan them, let hard panning left and right. You can use simple delays and things like that to try and spread the, um, the mix out because really, um, in a techno record or in a drum bass record, the, the track should sort of open like a flower through the frequency. So your kick drum and your bass is in mono at the bottom. And then I tend to sort of, as I work through the frequencies, try and pan things. And so the sonic information at the top end of the track is as wide as possible. So this is a really handy way of actually getting things to, to come across like that by using field recordings because they're so, so such um, sort of high frequency things you can pan left and right and or you can bust them all through one channel and side chain that whole channel in this case i've just done a little bit of panning so those these three channels here seven eight and nine you can see i've just panned one seven eight over here nine over here there's lots of different ways to do that i think it's really important to look at uh, reverbs as well using field recordings because if you're actually using a, a reverb effectively, like in this, in this way here, on a sound like this, you can actually sidechain the reverb tail off the sound. So in this case, I've got a towel reverb here. So when this is on, you can hear there's a reverb tail on there now. So now I'm actually side chaining the tail on the reverb. So when, when the reverb plays and the sound, the sound plays here, the reverb plays after it, you're actually affecting side chaining in stages, the tail on the reverb. This is another way of using the sounds and getting some really interesting kind of staggered, stuttered, almost like arpeggiated effects using um, field recordings. So um, I'm just gonna show you the difference between having the, uh, the field recordings in the mix and not having them in the mix. It's also a very careful balancing act because some, depending if you want a very clean sounding record, if you want a record to sound very highly textured, like a lot of sort of dubstep or electronica, you might want to really push the compressors through the mix and, and actually get a lot more texture in the track. So in this case, I'm just going to play it over a simple kind of techno groove. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to incorporate is this one, that sound into the mix. So you can hear that sort of tearing sounds just in the mix and it almost doesn't sound like a field recording anymore because of the way we've EQ'd it and, and, and reverbed it. The next thing to do would be to bring in the hiss or the white noise and things like room sound. So this one we've taken right up here with an auto filter, really pushed it in, heavily side chained to the kick drum. And this one again brought right up. So when these are brought into the mix, the whole mix should almost come to life a, a, a bit. And the sort of sonic information on the top of the mix will be a lot more kind of interesting. So you, can, so you can hear now that with, with that stuff in the mix, you've got... And basically that's it. I mean, you can use them however you want. 
Uh, you can delay them, you can reverse them, you can pick tiny bits out and use them as percussion. Um, they really, really are open to interpretation and um, I hope you enjoy using them.